Hey everybody. Uh, so um, I uh, <clears throat> in my game group, we you know we we typically like talk about things when we're playing our games. Like there's things that come up like how do you clean your brushes? Um, you know like do you varnish your models? How like what how do you um, like what kind of varnish do you use and things like that. And um, sometimes I think that they're like really good topics for uh, things like this, like to do a video. Um, one of the things that came up though was like, how do you use a wet palette? Like, how do you set it up? And you know, what are, what are like, what is it good for? Like, what are some of the strengths and weaknesses? Cause we were talking about paint drying out before you could, uh, before you could use it. Uh, so I just, you know, I had, um, a bunch of minis that were like different guys that I wanted to use for D and D and Frostgrave and stuff. And I wanted to set up kind of a big palette, you know, a, a full palette of colors, but I ended up just kind of focusing on, on one mini, but I think I gave a, a kind of a good explanation about what I think the wet palettes like strengths and weaknesses are. Uh, like what it's what it's good for and um, kind of like some a little bit of like color theory as far as like setting up a palette and stuff like that and um, and like how I do like wet blending uh, wet on wet stuff you know with the wet palette and uh, like blending colors getting smooth blends when you aren't using an airbrush or things like that. So anyways, yeah, let's, uh, let's do some painting. Let's, uh, let's break open the wet palette and do some wet blending on the wet palette. Oh, pardon me. <laughs> I don't. Yeah. Hey everybody. So, uh, I'm just going to assume that future me kind of told you why I wanted to do this video. Um, I've got my wet palette. Um, this is a Masterson's Stay Wet palette. Um, you know, it's designed so that you can keep like acrylics wet. It works for oils as well. Um, it just creates a little seal. And then um, I actually am going to use it like that. I have, uh, I have my first COVID shot today. I have a few hours to paint and then like I want to come back to it, so I just want to preserve my palette. Um, don't know how I'm going to feel after I get my shot. But I have these, um, these are just little uh, cooking baking sheet pieces, and then they they cut, they're folded into fours. And then um, I just, I, they're the perfect size, you know, so they're like already pre kind of cut into that size. So they're folded. So I just take them, I cut them up like that, and then I put the uh, wax paper side up. And then it wants to like curl up like that. You just kind of have to push it down. So, um, yeah, this is just a, this is just a sponge, you know, in a plastic container. It's not, it's not, you know, it's not rocket science. It just, it just keeps your paints wet um, or, or, you know, keeps them from drying out. But it does for, okay, so I have my pile of shame right here. I have a bunch of guys that I want to paint for like Frostgrave and D&D &D and stuff like um, my, uh, got a few wizards here for my Frostgrave campaign. I want to give them an upgrade. I've got some like characters, some guys that I might use for a character for D and D. He's a he's an elf who, um, or a yeah, half elf who uh, does a lot of fireballs. Um, <clears throat> so for stuff like this, this is perfect because they aren't all going to be the same color. Like I want to mix up a wide range of colors to just work on these guys, and then just you know have them. Uh, I want to mix up like a full palette 
And so I'm gonna have lots of different colors on here. And you know, I'm not gonna airbrush them. They've already been Zenithal primed. Uh, who has, you can kind of see on this guy, like he has his shadows in place. And, uh, and then he has his highlights. So, um, yeah, what I, what I want to do is I want to do kind of thin, like, glazes on top of these guys. And the wet palette is perfect for that because it kind of waters things down a little bit. Or it's, it's, it's really nice for that. All right, so let's talk about the wet palette. Uh, what it's for. Um, <laughs> all right, so I've got I've got a few different types of paints um, Citadel paints any kind of technical paint. No, that's not what it's for um, Especially not contrast or like the dry brush stuff um, is that it's just going to mess with the the formulation you're way better off just using it straight out of the pot same with like texture, paste, you know, stuff like that. Just use it out of the pot. Don't put it on your wet palette. Um, anything, and, and also I kind of feel like, I, I'm a big fan of P3. I really like their paints, but I don't use them on the wet palette. Um, just because I end up scooping them out and they have really, really good coverage. They're very opaque. And I feel like they're just better out of the pot. They also wet blend together pretty well, just, um, you know, brushing them together with a, a kind of slightly wet brush, like feathering them together. What they, what the wet palette is really, really good for, in my opinion, is dropper bottles. Anything that comes in a dropper bottle, um, aka game color, or, or, you know, anything Vallejo, uh, Army Painter, that's what this is for is uh and even like the uh the game you know inks or like shades things like that washes anything that comes in a dropper bottle it works it works well for that um you know technically I, I, if you want to use your like reichland flush shade or you know like if you want to use your citadel shaders on there that would work fine but anything in a dropper bottle uh so Let's see, so like this guy, this is, I think this is going to be my D&D character. He's a, uh, I mentioned that he's a, he's an elf who, or half elf who throws tons and tons of fireballs. Um, this just kind of screws on to him like that. So um, what I want to do is I want to make him pretty red. Um, but only him. Like, I don't want this guy to be red. It's going to be like one of my man at arms for uh, Frostgrave. So I'm just going to set up like a corner and I'm going to mix up some like yellows and reds uh, just in one corner and I'm going to kind of quarantine those colors. <laughs> I'm shake these up. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm trying to keep like reds and yellows and uh, I'm gonna keep those away from like my blues and my greens. I want those to be on the opposite end of the color wheel because when you mix those colors together, you get brown or you get black. So um, I want my, you know, blues and greens to be somewhere opposite from my reds and you know, you get the idea. But anyways, so I'm gonna start working on this guy. Let's see, I think. His cloak is going to be red. So I'm gonna work up from a brown. Um, and make that into a red. Because I want my shadows to be kind of brownish. I don't want them to be black because 
if you make your shadows black, then it looks like a, uh, a hole in the ground, or like a cave or something. Um, the only place where I want black shadows is like there, like under his robes. And I'm using Model Air right now, game, or, uh, yeah, Vallejo Model Air. And it's just, it's not quite as opaque. It doesn't have as much coverage as, like, uh, game color or model color. It's slightly runnier, and, uh, it's just gonna kind of run into those little recesses and create those shadows. Okay. And now I'm gonna start wet blending while it's still wet. I'm gonna start uh, doing doing some reds in there. And it's about you know like gradually building up those layers of color. I don't want, you know, opaque reds or, you know, browns or, or whatever. I just want to sort of gradually build up layers of color, getting to, you know, my high highlights being like bright red. But I want the shadows to be, you know, more of like a brown color. So I can, you know, like I can come in here and I can mix like a brownish red burgundy or whatever and kind of work that in there that's the whole idea of the wet palette is that you're painting wet on wet and you're blending your colors as you go All right, and so I've got the, uh, I've got those kind of deep reds in there. You can see, um, adjust my light a little bit. See, I'm trying to get a good camera angle so you can see what's going on. <laughs> um, so I've got my like deep reds in there. Those are gonna be my shadows, right? So now I want some bright saturated highlights. Some, you know, uh, bright red. So I'm just gonna start mixing that up over here, like the, the actual color that I want. So don't mix, do not mix colors on top of the, the mini. Mix them on the palette and then put them on. So get the actual color that you want, you know, what, whichever color that is, and mix it on the palette before you actually put it on. Paint with actual paint, like don't paint don't, you know, just smush the colors around until you get mud. Like, paint with the color that you want. And then since he's going to have this, you know, fireball thing, like, twisting around him, I want these, like, I want his robes to look, like, bright red in some places, you know. And I am using like the very, the tip of the brush. I want to use it kind of like a, a scalpel more than a, you know, hammer. Like uh, being strategic with where I put those colors. And then, you know, just if you get something that looks a little too strong, if you get like some reds here that you don't like, you can push them back, like push the, um, 
the pigments back to where you want them. That true. Push them where you want them. So I'm going to start, uh, pretty much got that cloak like how I want it. Um, might do some, some freehand kind of stuff on this little filigree later, but, um, I'm going to start working on the face and, but I'm using another, you know, this is like an ink, but again, if it's in a dropper bottle, it just works. It works on the wet palette. It's one of my favorite ways to do flesh tones though is that I've already got the uh, the Zenithal you know paint job I did the uh, Zenithal with my airbrush and then I've got my you know blacks and whites and like lights and darks in there so then I can just do some light washes just add just sort of put color on top of the um, the grayscale paint job that I already did with the airbrush and just kind of develop those without putting, you know, opaque color on them, just sort of building up um, uh, layers of color as I go. And I take some of my light flesh tone. Let's see. Yeah. And then I can just kind of blend that into the highlights where I want it. So I had a little accident with my black over here. I kind of got way more black than I need. But um, uh, so since this guy is going to be kind of surrounded by his fireball, um, everything can be kind of red on him, you know? Um, that's part of the reason why I wanted it to be red. Um, but let's say that I want to, like, I want to mix up some of this I want to make kind of a dirt, a dingy, like linen color, you know? Uh, it's okay if I have some red in there, you know, because the, because it's a bright saturated color, it's going to be kind of red from the, uh, you know, the fire. So, but that's, you know, this is a great thing. This, what the, what the one thing the wet palette is really good for is, um, uh, mixing colors. One more of this, like, sand kind of color. Because I want the uh, the top of his little I don't know tabard or whatever to be this kind of like dirty linen color, um, I'm gonna do like the very the tippy top highlights where the sun is coming down at like a kind of a kind of whitish you know like 
sandy kind of color. And you know, just blend that together. A little bit of brown. That's starting to look like a flesh tone. Um, I want that to be like, you know, light up here. But down here, I want it to be like it's red, like it's being lit up by the fireball. So I'm just gonna glaze in, you know, more like red. And it's, you know, it can be nice and saturated, like bright. It's supposed to be like a white. It has a red light on it. Pink. Then up here, those are gonna be my white highlights. So I've got most of like the base layer, kind of like where I want it, you know, my uh, my colors. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna paint, go ahead and paint this, the fire swirl. Uh, and then I'm gonna use some of this uh, Tamiya. And then this stuff is acrylic, but it's actually an enamel and it's like alcohol or, uh, yeah, it's an enamel. So I'm not gonna put this on the wet palette either. I don't wanna mess with the formula. Uh, I don't wanna, you know, water it down with water because it's already like transparent. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. that on my uh, fireball swirl thing. What's going on? All right, so I went out and got my uh, vaccine did the dog for the walk and everything. And uh, I, this is what it looks like, you know, glued everything down with the um, the transparent colors on his fire. Um, I think he's casting wall of fire. I think that's what that is. But so what I want to do now is I want to do some object surface lighting. <clears throat> um, object surface lighting is just having a light source other than the sun coming down from the top. So I want to make some some fire, some some red, you know, kind of lighting coming off of the fire. It's sort of lighting him up. So like I'm happy with these down here, his little cloak. So I got that, you know, red sort of colored from where the fire is going around. But this has been sitting for, you know, hours. Um, and then I'll show you. I, I haven't even checked it, but I know these are all gonna still be, all these paints are still, are still wet. So these things, you know, you can pop them in the fridge and it'll keep all those paints fresh for days. I don't recommend it though, because it starts to stink. It starts to smell really awful. Um, just take my word for it. So anyways, what I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna put in a little bit of uh, kind of orangey reds that are uh, on those high, 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 high key highlights. Like I wanna put a little bit on this side of his face, like, uh, in his hair and stuff, you know, like right here. 
because it's being lit up by the by the fire. But this is another thing that the uh, the wet palette is really good for is um, just keeping that palette you know wet so that you can <laughs> can keep using it for uh, you know for hours and hours. But like while you're waiting for something to dry or so I don't want it I don't want all the pigments over here so I'm just gonna kind of shove them this way so that they're like more lighting up that side of his face you know or the that side of his head where the fire is and down by his feet. And like, even if I want to do some dry brushing, um, I'll just do some edge highlighting. Even if I want to do like some dry brushing or edge highlighting, like the paints are thinned out, but they're still, um, they're still, you know, thick enough that you can uh, do dry brushing and it's still, you know, opaque. It's just, um, you know, they're just, it's just wet. <laughs> That's my explanation for that. So I'm just gonna put some, a uh, few little kind of edge highlights on here. On the, the tops of these flames. So if they don't, it doesn't, it looks kind of like candy to me right now, you know? All right, so there's the finished uh, paint job. So I'll, show, I'll tell you what I don't use the wet palette for. Um, when I want to do uh, opaque coverage. <laughs> so like I want to go around and black his base, just do a black rim around his base. Uh, so I'm going to use a flat and then I'm just going to go straight into this pot of uh, P3 Amar Black. So that's, that's one thing where, you know, if I want really good coverage and I want it to be nice and, you know, opaque, I do not use the wet palette for that. I just go straight into the pot. <laughs> that's the difference. So anyways, yeah, I will post some finished pictures, like a turnaround, show you what everything looks like when it's all done. So thanks for watching, I'll see you guys in the next one.